Hi everyone, today I want to show you a very interesting and powerful feature of Blender material system and that's a light path node. If we switch to the shader editor and press shift A in the input we have the light path node and what it essentially does it allows us influencing the material so it's uh, visible according to the settings we set up here. Unfortunately those features are able only in the cycles rendering engine and they won't work in Eevee. But let me now demonstrate how you can use this node. As you can see, my monkey object already has the very basic diffuse BSDF shader and I also have a copy of this shader with different color. Let's press Shift A, add a mix shader. Let's connect it. And with this very simple setup, you probably know that already the slider allows us changing the colors. But if I plug in one of those inputs here, uh, we will have a very interesting result. So let's use the camera ray, for example. And what's happening right now, you can see that for the camera and camera only, we have this shader visible. And for everything else, that is the reflections, the transparency here, we have this shader visible. So that's a pretty interesting uh, way we can manipulate materials in our scenes. For example, if we use the transparency node here, we can make the monkey invisible, but still present in the camera. So let's choose the transparency, plug it in here, and boom, you can now see it's not visible directly to the camera if you're using camera ray. But here in the transparency, if we just slide this glass panel, the monkey is still fully visible. Looks like a scanner or something. We can also mix different aspects of the light path node together for a bit more complex setups. So for example, I want my monkey to be blue within this transparent glass panel here. So I'm going to use the transmission ray for that but I would also like it to be blue in the reflections here. So let me press Shift A, go to, go to the converter, math, and let's use the math node with the add input here. I'm gonna add the transmission ray to the glossy ray, and now I'm gonna use them together here as an input. So we can see we now have those two properties added and applied to the material. As you can see, the light path node works on the material level only, but we also have settings allowing us to perform similar operations on the entire objects. Let me select this cube here. And if we go to the object settings here under this orange icon, and we go to the visibility tab, here we have a lot of different properties we can play around with. So similar as with the light path node, we can disable this object to the camera, we can disable it to the diffuse, uh, shadows, glossy reflections, so you can see we don't have it present right now, and it also disappears in the spheres uh, I have pl placed around the scene. We can still have the object visible to the camera, but invisible to the reflections or shadows. So that gives us a plenty of room to arrange the scene. Uh, maybe not super physically correct, but yeah, sometimes, for example, you would like to have this object illuminated, but you don't want to have the light sources visible in the reflections. So again, we can select any of the lamps and disable them to the glossy uh, path, meaning they won't be visible in the reflections. So yeah, I hope this video, this quick video is informative and I'm gonna be using light path node in my future tutorials quite often. So I really hope this introduction uh, will make things less confusing for you. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.